Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish. Today we are finally getting fish in that little five gallon to quarantine for the 20 gallon. And we're gonna go out with Zach and Joe to do it. Also, I have moss balls. They are back. They're no longer a global issue. And I also have floating plants, which are in a Wendy's cup right now because I don't want them to bring snails into the main tank. You may notice that these days I am quarantining things a lot more carefully for a lot longer of a time with a lot more detail in how I do it. And that's because I don't want worms. I don't want parasitic worms. I don't want snails. I don't want this. I don't want that. I only want what I want and I'm making sure that that's all I get. So let's go hang out with Joe and Zach. Would you like a strawberry? Strawberry? Did someone hand me one? Uh, oh, that was cute. That's cute. Hey guys, I'm back from getting fish from the store and I'm also back from Ripley's Aquarium, which is going to be a new video coming out soon, probably next week if I can get it edited in time. Like you guys know these days, I'm in no rush to edit anything. I'm taking it super chill and easy. And the video quality, because of my time I can spend to look into stuff like this, my video quality has really gone up. So this is the older video quality. And this is me testing it right after. Guys, I had no idea that flipping the camera around made such a crazy difference. It like, it's insane. So as you guys can tell by the date, it's been a long time since I've made a video. It's been a long time since I even went out with Joe and Zach to get the fish that I did. And you, are, you guys already know that it's a honey gourami. I don't have to disguise that. So a lot has happened and I've, I've got, I've grown, I've gotten a little smarter and I've got some more experience that I want to share with you guys and some cool things. One of those things is like I said, Ripley's Aquarium. If you guys want to see that, it should be the next video. It's going to be pretty cool. I saw a lot of awesome stuff there. I'm also going to do like a little short for it. I'm really trying to get good with the quality of my YouTube production instead of just pumping out videos like I used to before. And then hopefully one day I can merge them because this coming year, not going to be in school. I'm going to be supporting my wife in every way possible, but I'm not going to be in school, which means unlike the previous years, I should have some more free time to be able to do stuff like this. So we'll start with the biggest of the bunch, the 20 gallon rimless aquarium. It's looking really, really good. I love this aquarium. Obviously now it's got a bunch more fish in it. It's got the honey gourami. It's got some more ember tetras. So it's really gotten a lot more alive. There's a lot more movement to it. I've put plants in there. So now instead of the fake hornwort, which is now in the quarantine tank, we've got two different types of cryptocorian. We've got moss balls, like I said in the beginning of the video, and we've got jungle val. I did try some stem plants in there, but I've learned over the last month that not a lot is possible unless you've got a good nutrient-rich substrate. And I've always used, you know, I always had inert substrates, which means there's nothing that it really produces it doesn't affect the chemistry of the water at all and that includes sand and gravel but now i'm really wishing that i used clay you know nutrient rich substrates and i think that's what i'm going to do for the next tank since i missed that opportunity with this tank and i really don't want to redo the substrate completely i'm going to start using these little guys i wonder if it'll focus on that that'd be awesome these are root tabs and they're going to give a massive boost to my plants without having to redo the substrate all I have to do is pack them down to the bottom four to six inches away from the nearest plant and I should get massive growth. So we're actually going to do that right now. We're going to give some to the jungle valve because it's not actually been growing. It's always been a plant that's grown really well for me. So it's not getting enough nutrients in this tank, obviously. And we're also going to plant some near the cryptocorians and right where the moss balls are. I also want a banana plant. So we're going to provide a lot of nutrients on both sides so that we can get a lot more growth come over here and take a look at this beautiful aquarium you can see all of my fish 
They look so good. Now these guys are the new Ember Tetras and these ones are the old ones. I have no idea why the new ones come out. Like they're still orange obviously, but they're kind of dimmer. Like the full body orange you don't really get. It's more of an amber than an orange, but they still look good. I'm just wondering if they're not the same grade of Ember Tetra or if they're just younger. I really don't know, but even still they look good. I just hope that they color up a little more in the future. And then obviously the Honey Grommy, completely different personality here. He's not schooling with the others. I really like that these guys are actually schooling together by the way. Really love that. But I like that this guy is kind of a lone wolf. He kind of does his own thing. He's got his own personality. I love seeing him weave in through the moss. And by the way, we do have a lot of moss. It's grown like crazy. I've upped my light levels a little bit, so I think that might be part of it. We don't really have to worry about adding nutrients for this guy, for this big guy, because he's gonna get it through the water column, but it's gonna be more for this crypt and the one in the back there and the jungle valve back there, which if we look to the side, Get ready for shaky cam. Um, it does have some roots down there, but they're obviously not getting anything because even though the substrate is really deep, it's not holding any nutrients from it because I have such few animals in here. Now I also do have shrimp in here. They've become a lot more scarce since adding the garami, but we might be able to see some threading through the moss. If not, I'll just post some videos of them that I'll take later. You can also see that we've got some Saswasser tang in there. I'm gonna put a picture up of what that looks like when it's really grown in well. We've got some Java Fern over there under the rocks. Lots of very interesting plants here. No swords, I've thought about a sword, but I really would love to get a banana plant over in that corner growing lily pads over top of the Cryptocorans. Now we do have some Salvinia up there, a floating plant. It's doing pretty well. I do wonder if it's not getting enough light though because the light kind of only reaches one side. But it's definitely doing something. Like it is producing new plants. I also designed this little ring here to keep them from getting submerged by the filter. Okay, so now we're gonna get our hands a little bit wet and we're going to add the fertilizer, the root tabs. Now, I've never done this before, so this could completely turn into a mess, but the way you want to start off is by poking a hole in the top of them, and hopefully not squirting fertilizer everywhere. I also didn't want to get a thumbtack, so we are using a wine bottle opener. There we go. So there's a hole punched in it. We're just going to squeeze out all the air so that it can sink. I'm really worried this is going to explode. <laughs> so I'm actually just going to use my fingers here. I'm going to make a little space for it. I'm going to bury it really deep in there. Okay. And we're going to cover it up. Well, that's what our stem plants look like now. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. All right, now you can see what's really cool and I am dripping it everywhere, but this Saswasser tang is actually holding onto these rocks. You can see it's actually keeping the rock from falling. Okay, so a little bit of work later. And this is what we're left with. I really love how the moss balls accent the side. I patted down the moss a lot. I think I might have brought some of the shrimp out. Uh, they probably went right back into hiding. Now you guys can have a better look at the floating plants. This is kind of what I mean. Like they're doing, they're doing meh. You know, a little bit of brown. A little bit of life, a little bit of new growth, a little bit of decay. As you saw, I left the java fern here. You can actually see a little brown shrimp. Oh, and another one. Wow, I didn't even see him. Left the java fern there. I put some white rocks kind of along this path. You can see they're not white, but they're they're a little lighter. 
put them on either side of the path so it kind of looks a little bit more like a pathway underwater so that's pretty cool the swasser tang like i said before is now moved to the side so and then i put some larger rocks scattered in there and hope just got those from the dollar store for the project that she's working on so all the fish think i'm gonna feed them that's maintenance for today for this thing we're hoping that the cryptocorian especially and i believe this is when did i i believe this is lutea Hopefully the Lutea grows up into the back because it's been growing a lot slower than the Wendedi. And also the Saswasser Tang, which we planted back there, gets some more nutrients. Unless we find out that it's supposed to be low light, no nu low nutrient, then we'll have to move it back. We're also hoping in the future that the Jungle Val starts growing and kind of creates a curtain around the filter so that kind of gets out of sight and lowers the flow for the floating plants and the lily pads that we eventually get from the banana plant. And we're also hoping that the Selvinia starts to multiply more and more and more. I always get freaked out when I accidentally crush one between my fingers or when I accidentally destroy one as I'm wiping it off my arm. But hopefully that's not something we're gonna have to worry about in the future. Hopefully it just becomes like extra fertilizer if we break some. But we also have some duckweed growing in there, which for most people is a nightmare, but for me, I'm just happy something's growing. So what I'm hoping is happening before you guys see me again is that these plants are really absorbing those nutrients and growing nice and big and lush. I'm hoping that we get the banana plants in there, the floating plants multiply, the jungle val multiplies, you know, the fish stay peaceful. Now, kind of background on what I did over the last month, I quarantined the honey gourami and the ember tetras, the new, the three new ones, for a month, the whole time when I was away, because I really didn't want any more internal parasites. I'm gonna do that for the next round of fish. Next round, we're thinking of maybe celestial pearl daniels because my store started getting those, which is really cool. And we are on the wait list for anchor or Asian stone catfish. We're gonna get a trio in there, which should bring the fish load up to maybe 15, 16, depending on how many Celestial Pearl Daniels we get for the school. But the big takeaway is that this tank is not gonna be overstocked. It's not gonna be like the 40 gallon, 50 fish in it, which I could manage, but kind of felt overwhelming for me sometimes. This is gonna be something that's very balanced, very peaceful. All the fish are kind of slow motion hovers. They're not like the zebra danios that we started off with last time. So in summary, we want a lot more plant growth, especially from the jungle val, the lutea, and the floating plants. Everything else I don't really care as much for. However, with the moss, we're kind of at a point where we can start making money off of this. We also want celestial pearl danios and Asian stone catfish to start quarantining for the next month and we want a banana plant in that back corner to start growing some really nice lily pads so that's pretty much the tank update real quick five gallon no plans right now gonna stay quarantining eventually hope's gonna do something with it have it as her little tank to kind of contrast mine i'm really excited for what she's gonna do with it even though i have no idea what she's gonna do with it it's just gonna be cool to have two different expressions of creativity right beside each other in the form of living animals that we can kind of interact with. So anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for me. Hopefully you see my next video on Ripley's Aquarium next week. Make sure you check that out. I'm hoping that soon after that, we've got our banana plant, stone catfish, pearl danios, plant growth, that video. And then who knows what from there. There's a lot more awesome content that I'm sending your way. So if you like this video, make sure you like it. If you wanna see those kind of videos, subscribe. And I will see you guys on a Sunday.